Hello and welcome to this tutorial on hydrophone preamplifiers and signal integrity. Before we begin, it's worth noting that the material contained within this presentation has some overlap with the electrical impedance and AC tutorial and the transmission lines and ABCD matrices tutorial. If you require a refresher on either of these topics, the tutorial videos can be found on the Precision Acoustics website or on our YouTube channel. It's a common assumption that the hydrophone preamplifier is primarily to provide gain. This isn't strictly true. Whilst preamplifiers will provide some level of gain, their principal function is to act as an impedance buffer. To begin to understand why, we need to consider the equivalent circuit. Before we can do that, we'll begin by recapping the potential divider. Here we have two impedances, Z1 and Z2, and an input voltage, Vin. If we look at the voltage developed across Z2, we find that that is given simply by the equation as shown on screen. Pair that with the equivalent circuit representation of a simple hydrophone connected directly to a cable without a preamplifier. We have the hydrophone active element, which comprises a voltage source, and in this case, we've represented the source impedance as a simple capacitor. This is usually sufficient for piezopolymer active elements. There is then connection via a cable of known length and known properties and a load impedance. This is typically the 1 mega ohm or 50 ohm input impedances of a data acquisition system or oscilloscope. As is common in transmission line theory, we can consider the loaded transmission line as being a single input impedance, in which case we then have a potential divider set up with the source impedance and the input impedance. Unfortunately, the source impedance is not equal to the input impedance of the system, and therefore there will be a reflection at that interface. Moreover, because the transmission line is incorrectly terminated, it's likely that there can be resonances on that transmission line. Way of overcoming that is to insert a preamplifier that acts as an impedance buffer between the two. This ensures the transmission line is correctly terminated and that we don't get unnecessary reflection losses. If we look at some real devices, we can see just how important this impedance buffering effect is. This graph displays two traces with the same hydrophone connected to a similar length, 2.2 meters, of standard coaxial cable. In the blue trace, we can see what is measured from a broadband acoustic source when we have got a preamplifier present. And in the orange trace, we see what happens when the hydrophone connects directly to the cable with no preamplifier. We can clearly see that there's 20 to 30 dB reduction in signal amplitude over most of the range. Although beyond 40 megahertz, this seems to swap over as we see there's a half wave resonance from the mismatched cable, giving us an erroneous signal. In fact, if we subtract the two traces, the variance due to the absence of the preamplifier, wherein the resonance effect is very clearly noticeable. Now let's consider what sort of preamplifier we might use. One of the most common options is a single ended or unbalanced line preamplifier. In this case, we have our voltage source feeding through an impedance into our buffer amplifier, which eventually gives us our output voltage. Now, <clears throat> we may have some gain in the system as well as the impedance buffering. But what happens if this system is subject to an electromagnetic noise signal? Let's look at some example traces that we might see. 
we have our input voltage. And then there was a noise signal. And both of these are combined and then amplified to give the output. Crucially, we can see that we have amplified both the input voltage and the noise to yield our output. To try and improve upon this situation to give us better signal to noise ratio. And this is commonly achieved using differential or balance line preamplifiers. Here we also have a voltage source, but notice the different configuration of the source resistor. And we are using here a differential amplifier that only amplifies the difference between the signals received at the two inputs. Also, because of this configuration, the signal at the two inputs are ideally equal or opposite. We'll now consider what happens when a noise signal influences this kind of arrangement. Then if we look at the traces, we can see we have input one and input two, which are phase inverted relative to one another. The noise signals, however, affect each input equally and are not phase inverted. So that when these are combined and amplified, we end up with a very much cleaner signal. If we look at the equational basis for this, we can see how this happens. Here we can see that the noise signal is additive to both of the channels. However, because of the double negative, the fact that we are subtracting on something that is already phase inverted with the voltage signals, we effectively double the input voltage, whereas it is a simple subtraction of the noise on both sides. Therefore, we have the signal is effectively doubled, whereas noise cancels. We've been able to exploit common mode rejection, and this is one of the significant benefits of differential preamplifiers. So, to summarise, hydrophone preamplifiers primarily buffer electrical impedance. The gain they provide is an added bonus. And if that device is a differential one, we've got the opportunity of exploiting common mode rejection. Therefore, preamps preserve signal integrity and enhance signal to noise ratio. We hope you found this tutorial interesting. If you did, come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.